Hi guys, it's Tim from Bent Revolution, and today we're talking about the things you need to buy after you buy your recumbent. Okay, so you've bought your recumbent, and now you're thinking, that's the end of it, right? I've bought the bike, I'm all set. Wrong answer. So now you need to buy a bunch of things to take care of problems you may have when you're riding, or to take care of the bike. Uh, between rides. So first on my list of things to buy is a spare tube for each size of the bike that you have. If you have a 26 in the back and a 20 in the front, you'll need both a 26 and a 20. Um, you'll need to get the right type of valve, a Presta valve, but if you have a straighter valve, you need a straighter one. You also need to know the right width, which is here, for the tube. So to buy a tube that's correct for you, you need the number, the width of the, the circumference of the tire, and the um, width, as well as the valve. All this information is stamped on the side of your tire, so you can match it up there, and then just find the one with the right uh, width that goes with you. Or, of course, you can always ask your local recumbent bike shop professional, who will help you find the right equipment. Okay, so what if you get a flat on the side of the road? You're going to need to do something about it. Maybe you call AAA, who knows? But if you're uh, going to fix it yourself, you're going to need some tools. First, you're going to need a set of tire levers. These uh, tire levers will help you get the tire off the wheel. And uh, I've got another video about how to change a tire, which I can link here. But just to give you an idea, the lever goes in here like this, pops that bead out, and then you just run it around and get the wheel off. Easy. Okay, so you've got the tire off, you've taken the old tube out, found out what caused the leak and fixed that. Now you're gonna reinstall the new tube and inflate it. But wait, how do you inflate it? You're gonna need something to inflate it with. Uh, so I would suggest either carrying with you a mini pump or a pump of some sort, like this one, or maybe even easier, at least if you know how to use it, would be a CO2 container like this. These are just CO2 canisters in here, just a CO2 canister. And uh, this one has a valve where you can turn it on and off, as well as a neoprene sleeve to keep from freezing your hand because it gets very cold as soon as you release that, that gas from the, from the CO2 canister. What if you're at home and you need to put some air in your tire? Well, for that, I would recommend getting a floor pump. The floor pump is going to be something that looks like this. It's going to be uh, a, a good quality floor pump will help you out because it's got a gauge on the, on the bottom of it. It'll be made of good components so that you won't, it won't be flimsy, it won't fall apart. Yeah, they're kind of expensive, but it's an expense you only have to do once. So buy a good floor pump. The next thing you should carry with you on your bike and have it pretty much all the time with you is a set of tools. Now, by a set of tools, you can do a lot of different things. You can use like a tiny little uh, multi-tool like this. This has got all the, the different things you might need for a quick repair. Um, it's got a screwdriver. It's got uh, all the different size hex wrenches you might need. So it's a, it's a good tool, but it may not be the best tool. But look at how small it is. Very lightweight, easy to carry. If you're going to go the extra mile, you may want to get a set of home tools, a set of home hex wrenches, and that'll help you with a lot more repairs. You can also get a, a little fancier multi-tool that has more things. This is kind of next level stuff. This is a chain breaker. So if you have a problem with the chain, this is how you're going to repair that. Uh, but to use the chain breaker tool, you're also going to need a quick link or a speed link for your specific chain. And those are maybe a couple of bucks. You can get them pretty easily. It's basically a half link that snaps together. Another thing you should always ride with, especially in Florida, is water. So you should get yourself a water bottle. This one's insulated. So if you fill it up with ice and then water, it keeps the, the water cold for hours at a time which is great. You may need a couple of these. Um, you need a way to attach it to the bike if you're 
If your bike doesn't have a water bottle boss where you can bolt a, a bottle cage on, you'll need something that looks like this. Um, we use these all the time. It's, it Velcros onto the boom, but it's a cage that Velcros onto the boom, so it's easy to find a spot to put that onto the bike. There's also other manufacturers that make little clamps so you can turn uh, mount a bottle at, in different places as well. Of course, the biggest thing, now that you've got all these things, is how do I carry them on my ride? Well, you can, there's lots of little manufacturers that make uh, bags of all kinds. This one's not very big, but it would be big enough to carry all the stuff I just mentioned um, on your bike. Then you have all those things handy and ready to go. If your bike has a Presta valve that looks like this, a thin valve, it might be handy to have one of these adapters. And basically what this does is it changes your Presta valve into a Schrader valve. So it's more like a car tire valve at that point. And then you're able to go to like a gas station and get air at the regular compressor. I don't really like these, but you know, it is kind of a handy thing if you're in a pinch. Another thing you're gonna need is to keep your chain clean and well lubricated. Um, a great idea is after every ride or every couple of rides, just get a rag and then just wipe off as much as you can off the chain. The stuff you're wiping off is really just a grinding paste that is forming onto your chain. So you don't wanna pick up sand, grit, gravel, and have it wear out your components. You wanna make sure your chain is clean. So get yourself a rag, those should be easy. You could use an old t-shirt or whatever, but then you need uh, some good quality chain lube and please, WD-40, it's not a chain lube. Yes, it's a miracle, but no, don't put it on your chain, especially don't use anything aerosol. Everything aerosol goes in all directions and all you need to put the lube in is the roller here on the middle of the chain link. So if you're lubing the outside of it, it's just gonna make a big mess. Now that, the exception to that rule is if you leave it outside, yes, you're gonna need to put some stuff on the outside. But if you find yourself a, a good chain lube and do that maybe once a month, clean your bike chain and uh, re-lube it, and then wipe as much as of, it, of it as you can off to keep your chain clean, that would be great. Okay, so the last thing you may need is some way to work on your bike at home. And I've seen people make these out of PVC. I've seen them make, um, use a bucket to prop up the back end of a trike, uh, or maybe even use a cinder block with a towel on it just to prop up the, the rear end. Anything you can do to get the rear end off the ground and be able to rotate the wheel is gonna work great to help you do kind of a makeshift repair stand. Now, of course, if you wanna use a real stand, there are real repair stands for recumbents available, or you can, my favorite choice, take it to your local bike shop who specializes in recumbent repairs, and we can repair it for you. So, hope these tips helped. Help it makes your writing even more enjoyable. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.